wonderful. That is really, I, I want to say something about that. It's wonderful. You said, by actually giving her my complete attention, by letting go of all other thoughts, suddenly, do, did you know this person before? No. Suddenly, what I discovered was, I was actually in an intimate relationship with this other human being who I've never met, simply by actually giving her my complete attention. I think that's profound what you just shared. I think that's one of the greatest lessons we can learn, is that by giving our complete attention, suddenly you, you have the potential for an intimate, authentic relationship with another human being. And, and also, you didn't know this person at all. And we have this myth, we believe this myth, this, this idea that relationship takes time. It doesn't take time. It doesn't live in time. Relationship doesn't live in time. It lives in what's actually happening between two human, human beings right now. Is what she just experienced is that when you actually give another human being your complete attention, you are encouraging them to be completely who they actually are. And they feel encouraged to, to feel safe so they can actually come out from behind, you might say, the mask that we often wear in our day-to-day -day lives. You know? you know what mask I'm talking about? The protective mask we walk around, which we'll talk about in a while. Um, isn't it quite often that we feel like we have to protect ourselves, like it's maybe not so safe to, to say these very personal things that are going on? Yes, who, who feels that way sometimes? Yeah. But when somebody is actually with you, being with you, I, that's what I call giving, one, giving, one, per, giving somebody your full attention, is you're suddenly actually being with another person. And that you, make, you create a space, you create the space not a literal space like this theater, but you create the space where another human being can be who they are. Life is a series of, you know, wonderful, extraordinary, joyous moments and the most challenging moments as well, right? We all know that. That's just the truth. It's the way life was built, wasn't it? Pure? Pure, pure. Listen to this, pure. <laughs> a blank, a blank, a squishy blank slate. What else? Vulnerable. vulnerable. So when you think of these words, pure, vulnerable, a blank slate, what else what was there? Well, yeah, we know squishy. <laughs> right. Are these, are these good qualities? Pure, innocent? Yes. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, this is you and I, right? This is, this is how we were born. This is how we came into this, this thing called the human condition. Yeah, so you know that we were once, this planet was once a what? It was a pretty hot rock spinning around the sun, yes? And then these little organisms somehow crept out of the sea. They figured out that they could take energy. Now listen, you talk about a miracle. Talk about mystery. Talk about desire. They could, they could take an energy from 93 million miles away and convert it into a form that created an environment that supported life itself. That's pretty awesome, don't you think? That's, a, that's an awesome story of desire. What is the lesson from these two examples? Then what is the lesson for us? What is the lesson? What do we know? The, exactly. Did you all hear that? Say that louder. The bigger the climb, the bigger the That's right. We know that when something is easy, there's not, you know, when something comes easy to us, not much, uh, you know, not much great feelings and joy and, and satisfaction and pride involved. But when something is actually hard, really hard, there's a lot of satisfaction when we've accomplished it. Yes? But that's not how we live. When things get tough, we complain and we moan and we groan, right? When we know the truth, there's only satisfaction and joy when we've accomplished something that has been difficult. So let me ask you this. Anybody here ever drive a boat? 
Yeah? Cool. Okay, so when you drive a boat, you're supposed to keep the boat where? In the what? <laughs> yes, keep the boat in the water. That's a good idea. So, <laughs> and which part of the water are you supposed to keep it in? You know what it's called? In the channel. So you stay in the channel because if you go outside the channel, you're going to hit the what? Rocks. That's right, you'll hit the rocks. So they put, what do they put in the water? They put buoys in the water so you stay in the channel because if you hit the rocks, you're in what? Right. Okay. Now here's, this is, the, this is a key. This is a key. Anybody, now listen carefully because this, this will be very helpful for you. Anybody in here know anybody who makes those big mistakes that we say we all make, but they make the same big mistake over and over and over. Anybody know anybody like that? Yeah? And they cause chaos in everybody's life, in their own life? Well, that's a person who doesn't know what their life is about. You see, when you know what your deeper wish is, what your life is about, yes, we all make mistakes, we all hit the rocks, but when we know what our life is about, it gives us a way to get back into the channel. You see what I mean? It, when you know what your life is about, it, it gives you a way to navigate those troubled waters, the challenges that come up, the troubled waters, and it helps you get back in the channel of your life. We, talk, we call that the channel of your life. That you guys are under incredible pressure. I know that. And what I want, want you to know is that you're under, you're under pressure, the kind of pressure that I don't think any other um, you know, group of people at your age have ever had to deal with, ever. And I understand that. So, uh, and it bothers me a lot. So when you speak in first person, I, you're, st you're saying, this is, listen, this is my point of view. This is exactly what I have to say, and I'm saying it to you. This is my point of view. Now, you can disagree with me, but at least you know where I stand, yes? Now I know, now you know where I stand, and now what I ask from you is that you speak directly to me. Then I know where you stand. Now we have a relationship in which we understand each other. Now we can actually be with each other in, in reality, not in some kind of um, uh, guessing game. So it is powerful to speak in first person from your point of view directly to another person. Hard to be direct? Oh, yes. Anybody recognize it's hard to be direct? Yeah, it's hard to be direct because it's a risk. What's the risk if you're direct and if you ac actually speak the truth from your point of view to another person directly? What are you risking? What? Someone will challenge you. They may not like you. They may not like what you said. They may disagree, right? Yeah, it's a risk. <laughs> 